which is weird, right? Because you get rated, you're like, yes, I'm 90%. Shit, I'm 90%. There are two types of 90% VA disability, and this absolutely matters when a veteran is considering going from that 90% mark up to that 100%, hopefully 100% PNT mark. Now, starting this off with what I call a bad 90%. Which is weird, right? Because you get rated, you're like, yes, I'm 90%. Shit, I'm 90%. Okay, that's that's essentially what happens when a veteran hits 90%. It is both good and bad. And starting out with what I call a bad 90%, it's anything from that 85 to 89% mark. Now, sometimes 89% is pushed into the good zone, okay? But that's only based on certain scenarios like this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it up for you. Okay, so here you can see this veteran is rated at 90%, a bilateral factor of 1.9, and the veteran is technically 89%. Okay, you can't see it because my big head is covering it up, but the veteran is 89%. We have a 70, a bilateral 10, 10 for left and right a 30, a 30, and a 10, boom, that's 89. If you put 50 in here, bam, that is 100%. So that slight, very, very slight bilateral fat factor in that scenario pushes the 89 to 95 instead of 94. But, oh, by the way, and yes, I use Hill and Potten. That's my personal choice when it comes to the VA disability calculator. I have zero partnership or affiliation with them whatsoever, okay? But they do have the best calculator, in my opinion. Now, in general, and for the overwhelming majority, 85 to 89% sucks so good, right? It's that, yes, I'm 90%. Shit, I'm 90%. That's what 85 to 89% is, okay? It sucks so good. You are rated at 90%. And you should be happy. And at the same time, you are so close yet so far away from that 100% mark. Now, the question is not, what do I need to get to 100%? Okay, the question you should ask yourself that you need to ask yourself is, am I properly rated? Okay, is there anything that I missed? Is there a potential secondary condition right now or down the road that is likely or probable see the goal isn't to be a hundred percent the goal is to be properly rated at the same time we need to be aware of where we are at in terms of the va disability rating of our rating if you are at 85 percent and you want to buy an independent medical opinion that costs two thousand dollars because you're using some absolutely insane overpriced company for that nexus, which is your choice. That condition is, let's say, your knees, okay? So even if that is service-connected, and let's just do both just because, you are most likely looking at 10% for each knee. Yes, it would give you a slight bilateral factor. And now, although it would increase your overall or your rating, not your overall rating, that 85% would just become 88%, okay? And the only thing that changed was that you were now $2,000 more poor than you were before. Because an 85 is a 90, an 88 is a 90, a 94 is a 90, okay? 90% is 90%. That's just one example, and there are millions. And now the opposite also applies. So if you are 90 to 94, that is what I call a good 90, okay? Now we're in business. That nexus letter might be beneficial. I would not recommend anyone, anyone who is charging an insane price to begin with, but that is completely your decision, okay? My threshold is about $1,000. That's where, that's my threshold, okay? My max, really. All of a sudden, that becomes more enticing because we are at that good 90% mark. Now, this is not a video about Nexus Letters or DBQs, but nine times out of 10, I generally only recommend Nexus Letters and DBQs. If the veteran is fighting an appeal, that's where you'll see those shine more than ever.
mainly because you would think with your evidence that the private nexus provider would use to service connect the cmp examiner could do the same thing right no evidence no nexus so the evidence stays the same it's just the opinion we're concerned with hopefully the examiner can make that not all examiners are equal and that's probably the nicest way i can say that an exception to that is if that rating will push you will push that good 90 to 100 then i think we can justify at least for me that nexus letter in dbq to go ahead and submit the strongest claim possible so if you're at 93 you submit a condition you really want to make a strong claim you go all in medical opinion all in dbq you that rating would provide 100 percent overall rating obviously it's justifiable because the pay bump from 90 to 100 plus all the benefits is absolutely insane okay at 90 percent those little 10% ratings will only move the needle 1%, okay? So at 90, a hard 90, a tinnitus claim that is service connected would only push the veteran to a total of 91. Barely moves the needle here. I won't spend too much time talking about this here, and I'm just gonna link a video below in the pinned comments that goes way in depth of the, what I call the fissiv five-step process but going from 90 to 100 percent can be very very easy or very very difficult depending on one factor and that is the veterans evidence no two situations are the same it's evidence and evidence alone okay at civdiv we use something called the five-step process and that video will be below explaining each step in depth, okay? Those five steps are gonna be increases. Look at your service connected disabilities and look for increases, this is the easiest. Secondaries, looking at those service connected disabilities and potential secondaries that you have a diagnosis for or could get a diagnosis for. Denials, most difficult, okay? We're looking at why you were denied and then combating those denials with either an HLR, a supplemental, the board, or just kind of, it's not worth it, okay? Fourth is new claim. So maybe we have missed something from, from your service treatment records. And then five, the absolute easiest are presumptive conditions. And with those five-step process that I use in all my one-on-ones, that is how veterans go from whatever rating they are to an increase and hopefully that 100% PNT mark is especially for those at 90. At a bad 90, it's not good, okay? There is no secret hack. There is no quick trick you can pull off here. VA disability can be difficult for those who do not have the evidence and VA disability can be absolutely seamless for those who submit evidence-based claims. I cannot stress that enough. I've said that till I'm blue in the face, okay? You can either swim upstream or downstream. The choice is 1 million percent yours to make.